Did you know that on average, us Brits only spend 36 hours a year maintaining our gardens? Now, I think that's because we think of them as one big space and don't use them to their full potential. So start by thinking about all the things you want to do in your garden and plan areas accordingly. For entertaining and dining, you can create a barbecue area with table and chairs. Stone slabs or bricks provide a great solid surface for this. Lay them in an interesting pattern for added appeal. For relaxing, think about lounging furniture or a shed to potter in. Delineate each space with different flooring, outdoor screens and planters. Finally, don't let toys mess up your newly defined areas. Factor in storage solutions too, which can be integrated into your furniture. There are now more than 4 million of us working from home in the UK. But if you don't have room for a dedicated study, don't worry. Anywhere can become an office with an imaginative use of space. Here are some places you might not have thought of setting up. How about an unused alcove? a spot under the stairs, or even a cupboard. All can be converted with shelving and a chair. Don't be put off if your space seems too small. If you're really pushed, consider a drop-down desk on piano hinges with detachable supports. Finally, when choosing a space, be sure to think about traffic behind the chair. You'll need at least two-foot clearance. Studies show that people with a tendency to accrue clutter take longer to fall asleep than tidy folks. So remember to regularly sort out your belongings into keep, donate, recycle or bin boxes. For the items you're keeping, smart storage is key and can be built into unused spaces or incorporated into your furniture. But remember, clutter doesn't just mean too many books on your bedside table. Your mind needs to be clutter-free too. Well, the key thing is to remember in your bedroom, you've got to ensure that you are not using your devices at the wrong time. Scientists reckon particular handheld devices like some smartphones and e-readers should be limited in the hours before bedtime because of the light they give off. If you're just too addicted, there are apps that filter the light or place an overlay on your screen. A study last year found that nearly a quarter of Brits surveyed said that they would rather work one day a week from home than have a pay rise. But is your home office making you as productive as you think it is? What you surround yourself with has a big impact. Data scientist Chanuki Serencini has been studying this. What do you think of my office? Well, there's a problem. There's no window <laughs> and there's no nice view. So the study reveals that um, when we live in more scenic areas that we actually do feel healthier and even happier. And how does that affect actual productivity? There is a theory called attention restoration theory. And what it says is that when you look at a really beautiful setting, um, it seems like it helps you become a little bit less mentally fatigued. Mm -hmm. So that's why they say it kind of restores your attention and then you can get back to your work and feel a lot more concentrated. But what can people do if they haven't got a nice view to look at? In my office, um, I don't have a beautiful view to look out. What, what I do is I have these postcards of beautiful views that I put around me so I can still kind of feel that nice view even if I can't look out my window. If building a window isn't an option, then along with pictures, also think about lighting. A local light on your work area will help you focus, but you should also layer light throughout the rest of the room to avoid eye strain. Anything else? A simple thing to do is to have indoor plants. In fact, research shows that simply adding houseplants to an office increases productivity by 15%. Result. If you've got kids, bath time can be one of the best times of the day. But the uh, detritus can take over the entire room. First, look for storage space in your fixtures. You might be able to use the empty spot under your bath creatively. Or you could integrate storage into the space under the sink. Or you could do what we did and build a ladder shelf, which is a great way to keep everyday essentials to hand. Plus, this one drains the moisture from wet toys back into the bath. 
Furniture maker Nessa Doran O'Reilly starts by sanding down and painting her ladder with water-resistant chalk paint. Perfect. The two top boxes are all timber. The bottom two use clothesline threaded through holes drilled in the timber frame to create a net. And then it's done. Believe it or not, there's a science to dressing your bedroom for the perfect night's sleep. But don't take my word for it. Psychologist and sleep clinic founder Shirelle Shallow says for a good kip, studies show decor matters. So there are particular colours that are going to be key for that. Oh, right. So what they're saying is that if you have a blue bedroom, you're more likely to feel calmer and relaxed. In fact, a study found it was people with blue on their walls who got the most sleep, an average of seven hours and 52 minutes a night. Those sleeping in a purple bedroom, on the other hand, were, on average, only getting five hours and 56 minutes. But what you put on your bed is also important. Some people struggle sleeping in certain temperatures, and one of the things that we can do to help take control of that is to ensure that we've got natural fibres on our bed sheets. One study found that wool produces a longer and deeper sleep compared with synthetic materials. But other natural fibres, like cotton and linen, also absorb moisture to help regulate body temperature. There are so many options when choosing new kitchen decor, and a recent survey showed the average standard kitchen costs almost 40 grand in a detached house. But before you break the bank on new fittings, here are some ideas anyone can try. Wooden worktops can be repurposed as shelves, a clever way of creating on-trend storage without having wall-to-wall -wall fitted cupboards. Think about hitting the salvage yards for reclaimed sinks, wood and fittings like taps to save money and add style. And finally, before you chuck out your units, you could thoroughly refresh them by getting the doors stripped or sprayed by a professional. Or, depending on the quality, you could even repaint them yourself, as upcycling guru Annie Sloan showed me. After years of knocking down walls, many homeowners are now trying to recreate snug spaces, and there are a number of ways you can do it. You could build a dwarf wall to subdivide the space without compromising on natural light. Or perhaps block out different parts of the room with different types of flooring. Try sleek woods in the living area and carpet or a rug under the bed. You could also use lighting to change the feel of different zones, so go for bigger, brighter lights in places of activity and soften the lighting in the sleeping area. And finally, pieces of statement furniture can help too, like a big, bold bookshelf, a comfy corner sofa, or, as we're doing, a beautiful boutique headboard. With your room painted and decorated, your last step is perfecting the room with the best layout possible. Here's how. For happy TV viewing, chuck out your low TV stand at once. The centre of the screen should be at eye level. There's an ideal distance for viewing too. You can comfortably view a 20-inch TV from around 4 to 5 feet, but your 50-inch whopper needs a room where you can be around 12 feet away. Many stockists supply online guides. Looking straight ahead is the most comfortable, so consider investing in a movable bracket if you can. A living room should also have versatile lighting. Lighting can affect everything from sleep patterns to brain function, so it's important to be able to adapt brightness levels to suit whatever you're doing. And with the latest smart bulbs, you can switch between lighting moods using an app from the comfort of your sofa. Just bliss.